name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. All right. Yeah. So, um, you know, when Blue asked me to to present this topic, you know, obviously, uh, before you've listened to the sermon, you'll say yes. But um, once you've actually listened to the sermon, you're like, oh, no, can I really do it? Um, because really, as I say, this topic is not an easy topic. Um, more so if a person is going through it or has gone through it. And as I say, what I felt the Holy Spirit say to me was, um, I can never fully explain why it happened to you, whatever happened to, to, to each one of us, but rather to speak from a point of encouragement to say that you are not forgotten. God has not forgotten you. And um, in as much as he knows the grains of sand, mm. you know, the grain of sand, that's how much he remembers you yeah. um, in each and every trial and tribulation that you go through. Okay. So just to share the first uh, screen, if you may please, Blue. The first one, how to get back what you lost. I think we need to go back a bit. How to get back what you lost. I'm there now. Okay. All right. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, as I say, I've shared um, the, the full, um, you know, teaching um, by Pastor Robert. And this really is a very abridged and shortened version of it where I was just trying to pick up on the, the main points, okay? So the fundamental questions, um, well, his story begins with what's happening now, you know, the, the loss of jobs, loss of income, loss of loved ones, uh, which is something that we are all experiencing at this time. And then he then points out uh, fundamental questions, which he says, what do we do when we have lost something? And then question number two is, can we get it back? And if so, how do we get it back? Okay. So go on to talk about some types of losses. As I say, um, loss of a loved one, either by death or perhaps a divorce. The jobs, as currently is the situation now, which um, obviously affects the income coming into the home, as well as security, freedom, and all of that really boils down to a loss of self-worth, where you really don't feel um, of any worth as a person. Mm -hmm. And I also make mention of the feelings associated with loss. We often find ourselves um, feeling very angry. Anxiety builds up. There's a feeling of hopelessness, rage, also feeling unworthy, abandoned, forgotten. Those are just a few of, of the feelings that we feel um, when we go through loss. And then from there, it takes us to the blame game where then it's like we begin to question, is God really there? And if he is, does he really care? And why would he allow this to be going on in my life? You know, um, we also look to the devil to blame him and say it's the devil's doing. But as Pastor Robert says that when we blame the devil in some things, we're actually giving him credit because the devil really doesn't have that much power. Mm. Um, yeah. We also tend to blaming others of our situation, our losses, our pain, our grief. Mm. And lastly, it's our own selves that we, you know, begin to beat ourselves down to say, I could have, I should have, and all that which is too late. So it goes on to say, blame doesn't get back what is lost. 
And hence his message was, so what does, what does bring what has been lost? Mm. Okay. Mm. And um, in as much as we can all fully agree, you know, uh, um, the loss of a loved one through death, you know, there, there's, there's really no bringing back of, of that lost person. Mm. But if I can just share with you also just a personal story of my own experience, mm. when I lost my father, um, <clears throat> my father was asthmatic. He, he suffered many, many years with asthma. And um, he passed away, you know, it, it's been years now, but um, he passed away like today. And then the following day, I was going into labor because I was expecting, I was expecting my son at that time. Mm. And I remember being in that labor ward and, you know, it's, it's all these emotions that I was experiencing to say, God, I cannot understand why you would take my father away from me and, you know, almost substitute with this baby that. I haven't as yet connected with, you know. Um, so it, it was very painful. And even the labor itself was, was very painful. And yeah, I think in that maternity ward, I must have been the loudest and really just causing a lot of <laughs> commotion in there. But that was coming from a place of, of hurt, a place of pain. Mm. And um, yeah, so it's that thing to say, you know, how do you get back what you have lost? So in as much as I did not get my father back, I think over time, not I think, but actually over time, mm. I got comfort knowing that he was no longer in pain. You know, his suffering was no more because there were nights when we would have to call ambulances at odd hours of the night to, to get him to a hospital so they could put him on a on an oxygen machine. And it, it was really painful to, to watch him suffer like that. Mm. So with that pain, I'm grateful that God was able to comfort me by giving me a son who was born exactly one day after I lost my father. And he is just a, a remarkable and, and loving um, yeah boy you know he has the same spirit as my father very loving very caring and very warm so that is how i so like find comfort in 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 the loss of a loved one um and as i say i cannot fully say i stand here and i understand your pain or grief hence i had to just say that you know we're all coming from different levels in our dealings and um Therefore, it can only be the Holy Spirit that can intercede um, for us and, and bring us that healing and restoration that we seek. Mm. Okay, all right. So, yeah, that was just a diversion, just to tell you a little bit of, of my own personal loss. And maybe I can also then just uh, open it up uh, where you guys might want to share a little bit of, of your own losses and... Um, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Three, four, oh, sorry. The, the, the greatest loss that I ever experienced um, was, the first one was a loss of my father as well. Mm -hmm. um, I was in my, it was 1998, still in high school. So um, yeah. I didn't, know uh, the feeling of pain i've been funerals before but like losing somebody close to you then has mm -hmm. not it was not something that i have experienced myself personally at that time so it is a very painful uh, experience knowing you're not gonna see this person again and yeah yeah and all of that so um yeah i, I can i can concur with you on the pain of losing a father, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that's 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 something that's you know out of this world, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the one for today is really, you know, um, yeah, it, it really takes a knock on, on, on us. Uh, Shaba, anything you'd want to share from your, from your side? Uh, can I share later? Okay, sure. Not a problem. Not a problem. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so it's been to say that, you know, in as much as we can go up and down with um, the whole blame game, you know, um, that's not going to change the circumstances or situations that we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think the point of departure is how you then decide to deal moving forward with your experience. And that for me has been my, my strength to say that, you know, I cannot change what has happened to me, be it a divorce or whatever the case may be, but moving forward, how do I choose to move forward from here? I don't want to, to stay in a place of bitterness and anger. And um, I believe that that's what also will also unpack as we go on. So if you can just please move to the next slide, Blue. All right, okay. So Pastor Robert then um, mentioned a few principles, okay, in, in terms of where to from the pain that, or the loss that, that you have encountered. So he mentioned the principles and, in, and to that, it was also showing how David, during his time of loss, fought back. Okay, so the first principle that he mentioned is to say that the battle is real. The battles that we encounter are real. And yes. we are encountering spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And he referenced Ephesians 6 verse 12. Yeah. Okay, and... Also at the same time, having identified that we are fighting spiritual warfare, he also went and he spoke about um, putting on the full armor of God. And that, if you think of it in the context of, you know, um, soldiers going to war, they need to be prepared. They need to have, you know, their full gear. Mm -hmm. And so it is here to say that as we are in battle, as there is this consistent um, spiritual warfare going on around us, we need to wear the full armor, not just part of the armor, but all of it to safeguard ourselves. So I just want us uh, please to read from Ephesians 6 uh, verses 11 and 12. Anyone who has that? Uh, Ephesians 6 verses 11 put on all the armor of God gives mm -hmm. you so that you will be able to stand up against the devil's uh, evil tricks should I continue yes no that's fine that's fine so there it is to say we need to put it on so that we can withstand against the schemes of the devil, because he doesn't also just let it be. He is continuously fighting us, yes. although he has already lost the battle, mm. but it is his nature to just want to come and cause havoc mm. and commotion in our lives. Yeah. And hence the encouragement to say that as children of God, we need to stand with the full armor, prepared to meet or to defeat um, trouble when it comes our way. Yeah. And then, yeah, so in that, he also then gives us um, of how David fought when he was faced with a situation of having lost everything. Yes. And the reading comes from 1 Samuel 30, verse 4. I don't know if you have that close to you, um, can also just read that for us, please. 1 Samuel 30, verse 4. 
verse 18 or 4. Oh, four. All right, oh. I got it. David and his men started crying and did not stop until they were completely exhausted. Okay, all right. So what David then did was that David here faced the fact that he was without strength to carry on. And it says that he wept aloud, which really shows the grief and pain that he was experiencing. So here he faces it head on. He faces it to say that I'm lost. I cannot go on by my own might. I cannot go on. And again, this is where it takes us to say that the principle is that we then need to guard ourselves by putting on the full armor of God. Mm. Okay. The second principle um, that was shared is that we have a hope restored. We have a hope and restoration is promised, but complex. Okay. Mm. So we have a hope, but restoration is promised, but complex. So I started to like asking myself to say, why would the restoration mm. be complex? And some of the things that came to mind for me were to say that, you know, yeah. our faith tends to, you know, waver. We, we are not steadfast in the word. Yes. And because of that, it creates complexity. Come on. And then I also thought of the time Abraham had been promised mm. that he would be a father of many nations. Mm. Okay. but. In that, the waiting became too long for him. Mm. And he then decided that he was going to improvise rather than wait on God's provision. Yes. And that's when he had his son out of wedlock. Mm. Because that is also us at times where we are trying to do something to fix something. Yeah. And yet we are being told to say, hold steadfast what I have promised will come to being. So regardless of the time or age that had been lost to Abraham, mm. in the end, God fulfilled that promise to him, you know? Mm. And I also thought of it more deeply to say, I can imagine Abraham sitting with, you know, other men, Mm. And while other men are boasting about their sons to say, this is my heir, mm. he had nothing to show for it other than to tell him that, you know, God has promised me great things mm. of which again to men, that would be unbelievable when they knew the age of his wife to say that, yeah, given her age, she is no longer, you know, she can no longer conceive. Hey. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, really, um, those are the principles that we are faced with to say mm. we have a hope. The hope is there. Restoration is promised. But mm. if we don't abide, then it becomes complex. So if we look at what David did, David confessed the promise. And that is in 1 Samuel 30 verse 18. In confessing the promise, having been robbed of everything, mm. in the end, David was able to recover everything again because he confessed the promises. And I felt that, you know, that was something that we also need to do in that time of discouragement when nothing seems to make sense to us at all. We need then to turn to the word and confess the word mm. to remind ourselves yeah. what the promise says about our lives. And that is something that we can hold on to. And also as we say it also to remind God that God, this is your spoken word you said, and I need this for my life. Mm. And hence that is our way again of getting back what has been lost. So having cried as David had faced the facts, 
yes. having faced the facts to say that this is my situation. I have lost everything. Yes. He then went on to confess that promise which God had made. And there are so many promises in the Bible mm. regarding us that God has made. Yes. Okay. I'll just stop there just to allow you also just to put in your thoughts and comments. Mm. Okay. Uh, I don't know about others. Um, it's, it's eating home the part about principles. Mm -hmm. that, um, we are at war. As much as at times we, we are naive to think that we are not at war, everything mm -hmm. will go according to our plans and everything. But um, a person at war understands that at war there, is, um, there are casualties at times. At war, yes. it's not easy. You know, mm -hmm. in a war, uh, at times there are some battles you will lose in order to, yes. to win a war. So that's that's what I'm having in my heart as as you busy sharing. That our hope is to win the war, not just mm -hmm. to win the battle. You know, because the battle is not ours; it belongs no. to God. You know, the battle mm -hmm. is not ours. You know, it belongs to the Lord. So at times when we face challenges, it is necessary for us to remember, you know, whose we are and who has called us here. You know, and yeah. Amen. 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 Anyone else would like to share? Yeah. Um also, also on my side, it's home harder uh, now that we, you know, referencing how the, how I, I think the pastor used, he used the words sermon illustration, you know, referring to his own experience in the, in his house with the five girls that experienced the same mug. Yes. Yeah. You know? Losing the five, I mean, losing that uh, bag, one screaming, one, you know, closing the door because they could see far ahead, lucky for them. And then the others were mm -hmm. currently. And then his own one where he, he, he managed to demand, you know, what was there, rightfully his by birthright, his promises from God, you know, just like what you are referring to David with um, confessing the promise. Yes. He confessed his also his promise, his, his birthright, that whatever the devil steals will come back five times, you know, five folds. So it's not easy to do that. I mean, that's a shit. That's what it was a dress, you know. And David, it was life or death. I mean, he could be dying, but he found strength. That's mm. the grace of our father that he still gives us the strength to even call up to him, you know, to, to remember his word. He writes his word in our hearts forever. So he also gives us the will inside us. He stirs it up that when you are so down, you know, I'm putting a deep, a word in you that you will remember when you are down. So I also give thanks to him for those times where we are find we're able to find strength in the midst of trouble. Yeah. So yes, um, it hits home. The fact that you said earlier on about how you've suffered losses or experience, mm -hmm. you know, and now you are able to talk about it, you know, that those kind of things that we thank God, we thank, I thank God personally for, mm -hmm. for having such strength. God, 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 you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put, um, I don't have words for it, but it takes guts. For lack of a better word, it's, it's, but mm. those, those gods come from the Lord Himself, you know. And I give thanks for those gods too, because it's the word right now that is telling us that we're not fighting physical warfare, it's spiritual warfare, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Although the, the physical tends to show more, but such is the, the ways of 
the devil. He, he wants the, the physical to, to show more. I mean, that's what we were talking about last week. He wants the physical to be as though it's true, but we know very well that it's spiritual. Um, and we have a spiritual armor of God that we must wear mm. and for ourselves in, in, you know, in li- uh, at times of hardship, keep ourselves confessing those promises mm. as though, you know, we are David. But we know our, our, our Christ has overcome this battle, you know. He has overcome. So, yes, uh, keeping that faith and, and confessing that Psalm 91 um, all the time, you know, even, even when it's bad. It's, it's one thing um, to confess Psalm 91 yes. uh, before you get into a problem. But if you can do that still when you are into a problem, my man, the revelation is that Indeed, 10,000 has fallen by your side and a million by your other side and nothing is Amen. touched on your platform. That you are in it and you are able to do it. That means that's a reality for you. So, yeah, I give thanks for, for the weight, for the weight that keeps us, you know, spiritually intact. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to, to touch on as well. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for, for that share. You know, as you say, um, scripture is so easy to read um, when you're not going through, when you're not in the fire. But um, the real testing is when you are in the fire, are you still able mm. to apply the principles? Mm. Um, and, and that's what um, Pastor Robert was really sharing with us, understanding and then the application of the principles. So, yeah, we can move on to the next slide, please, Bloom. Okay. Okay. All right. So another principle that he shared with us was we have authority, meaning we have legal rights as God's children. But it doesn't end there. Uh, These legal rights need to be enforced. Okay. Okay. So as I was reading this, I then thought about, um, you know, the current uh, situation with with the royal family. Um, As we know, Prince Charles is the heir to to his mother's throne in in the event of her death. Uh, Rightfully, he will become king of England, right? But um, what's currently happening is that uh, public opinion wants Prince Charles' son, William to take over the throne. Mm -hmm. And again, it was me asking myself, why would they want this? And why would they want to bypass, um, you know, Prince Charles? And one thing I've realized with um, Prince William is that he's very much into the work of, you know, of, of, of the family, of the royal family. He's not laid back, if I can say so, like his father. So in as much as he has authority, in as much as Prince Charles Mm -hmm. has authority, I don't think he has actually won the public confidence to say that he, he, you know, he enforces that right. Mm -hmm. He's really more of of a shadow, if I can say, Mm -hmm. and like, um, you know, Prince William and, and his wife, Kate, So that's how it is when I look at it to say that as children of God, we have been given that authority. It is within us. But what are we doing with that authority? What are we doing with that authority? Are we sitting with it and just, you know, saying, receiving it on a silver platter? But we actually need to work and we need to enforce that authority that has been given in us, given to us. And hence, you know, it's about exercising a muscle. I, I liken um, authority to a muscle that also needs to be exercised. If it's not exercised, it's useless. Yeah. It serves no purpose. And in as much as I say, let's have the authority, let's, yeah. you know, let's really hold on to that legal right of ours. I also feel that we need to do it with a gentle spirit such that when people see us, 
they then want to know what is it about this person that is just so beautiful, so, you know, so soft and so gentle, rather than coming out across as almost being a bully. Um, I think, you know, God is not like that. And we shouldn't also have, have that uh, spirit of, of using our um, authority um, to, to undermine others, but rather let it be a spirit that will encourage others to want that which they see in Sichaba, that which they see in blue and say, I also want to have that. Mm -hmm. And that's one way of ex exercising our authority. Mm -hmm. So that's a principle. We have authority, mm -hmm. but we need to exercise it. It needs to be enforced. Otherwise, it lies, you know, um, unused and um, we'll never achieve much from that. Mm -hmm. So in David's fights, um, as the book of uh, 1 Samuel 30 verse 17 says, it says that David knew the word. David found strength in God mm -hmm. and in the word. Mm -hmm. By seeking God, God told David to pursue. Pursue meaning to go after, to fight relentlessly to get back that which he had lost, okay? So that is him, David, exercising his authority. He knows that he has authority, but again, he knows that there is a higher being above him, and therefore he goes and he consults God to say, what should I do in this situation? Do I let that which has been stolen from me go? Or do I go after it? And it is where God clearly tells him that go after it, be relentless. And um, maybe we can quickly turn to, how are we doing on time? We've got about nine minutes. I think we can quickly turn to the verse and just um, read it. If anybody has it open, they can read for us. Thank you. Um. Yes, verse 17. Mm. I'm still looking for it. Okay, <coughs> sorry about that. That's fine, thank you. Verse 17. David fought them from dusk until the evening of the next day, and none of them got away, except 400 young men who rode off camels and fled. Amen. Okay, so it tells us the relentless fight that David put up from dusk to evening, from dusk to evening. So we need to ask ourselves to say that in whatever challenges that we encounter, what is the fight that we put up? Is it a fight just for that time? And then we say, we easily give up and we say we've lost the battle. Or are we like David who will fight to the very end? He will give his best and although some may have fled, others remained. And so that's the same spirit that we really need to just um, take on in terms of our fights. Mm -hmm. And this to me, in my own personal life, I see it as, you know, when we talk of God's promises for us, I see this as being a promise of God to say that he wants also to see us how much work are you on your own prepared to put in? Mm. Because in the work that you will put in, yeah. surely he will see you through it. Mm. He wants to see how much you will give into it. And then he will be with you. You know, don't sit back and expect him then to do everything. That's my take on, you know, having this relentless spirit of fighting what we come through 
and through the relentless fights, it also builds up on our character. Yeah. We become stronger, you know, having gone through some experiences, it leaves us stronger. Yeah. It's not the best of experiences that we encounter, but there are lessons mm. to be learned from what we go through. That's right. So that's the same encouragement to say, um, let us be like David. Let us know the word. Yeah. Let us seek the word. And with that word, let us take that word into our battles, into the battles that we face, into the battles of our losses, be it jobs, be it financial losses, be it whatever sort of losses. Let us go in with the word mm. and let us also fight a good fight mm. for the restoration of what has been um, Mm. of what we have lost okay mm. and then finally in closing i just end up with my slide of hope and perseverance in christ mm. so reading from james 1 um, 12 it says the crown of life is bestowed upon those who persevere in trials the crown of life is bestowed upon those who persevere in trials and this got me thinking to say that we need not only persevere when we find ourselves in trouble, mm. we need to persevere each and every day of our lives, yes. be it in the good times or whatever we're going through. We need to persevere in our faith. We need to keep on wanting to get to that unshakable faith mm. so that when we take a knock, you know, we, we are still standing. We are still standing because of that perseverance that we've built, that yeah. muscle that we have built and exercised over time. Mm. We also need to persevere in righteousness, i.e. in um, having a right standing with God all the time. Mm. Perseverance in prayer, and that is praying without ceasing mm. in all situations and in all seasons. Let it not be only in time of need, that God hears our prayer, but at all times, be it thanksgiving with, you know, a thankful heart, whatever the case may be, let us raise our voices up to heaven and um, con constantly have that communication with our father. So we need to persevere and pray without ceasing. Lastly, I believe the perseverance in love. Love is the greatest of all as was shown to us by the sacrifice on the cross. And so in our own being, we are placed here on earth for a purpose and a reason. And as I say that, you know, the blessings that we receive, they are blessings that we need to distribute to others. Mm -hmm. And we do that through um, actions of love for one another and to each other. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so that was that, as I say, very abridged and shortened to actually um, what uh, the pastor shared with us, uh, but I had put it on the group. So anyone who might have missed uh, the sermon can go on to that as well and just read up more on it. Um, but this was my taking from the message to say that... Um, it is without a doubt that what you have lost, it will be given to you in multiple fold. Um, and, you know, God does not break us because he doesn't love us. Sometimes we are broken to better us so that he can promote us to become better beings. And um, that's really my message that I'm sharing with you guys today to just say, you know, let us be there for one another. And um, what I also felt was that during this time of lockdown, I was really, I'm really actually concerned with, um, mm. you know, people in Sky Group in terms of how they are coping. Um, yes. And as uh, Sky leaders, are we doing enough in terms of just checking up on them? Because, you know, the devil is up and about at this time to really just cause that isolation in us. And people just need to hear that regardless of what you are going through, I can never fully understand. 
but I want to give you that word of encouragement to say that you are not forgotten. God still loves you and he has greater plans for you. Amen. 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 My side, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I had, I had your last slide here talking about perseverance also in faith, not only in, you know, in all the trials, but you need to persevere on also on love and other things. I was I was thinking of um, how to get this uh, as a default mode because I mean if if we are in a war, I mean mm -hmm. continuously be on default, persevere in faith mode. Yeah. And I I wanted this slide just puts it for me. Um, it's, it's the way that I was meditating on actually from. From the hill song, song from the song, there's another in the fire. I kept on trying to understand or trying to to reason with it and say, mm. I know if I find myself, you know, in between where I used to be and this reckoning, I will never be alone. You know, mm. I need to keep on having the song in me playing. I need to be. I need to keep it in default mode to persevere in faith. Absolutely. And, and, you know, always know my righteousness. With God, my right standing with God, you know, yeah. will not by anything that I do, it's a gift already for me. But I, I needed to understand how James was putting it to say, persevere in trials, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in your faith. So thank you. It sums it up. It's, it's just a waiting season, you know. Um, it just agrees. Amen. 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 Mm. Any thoughts, Blue, um, as we conclude? I think it, 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 it goes back to some of the things that Chava also was saying. That mm -hmm. uh, in order for us to, you know, you, 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 we pray and say, God, uh, use me. And mm -hmm. the preparation part to be used by God. <laughs> You are, you are gonna go to trials. Yeah. You are gonna go to trials, and and uh, you are gonna face a lot of things that will require you to persevere. I love the perseverance there. That mm. it, you know, perseverance in righteousness. You know, perseverance in prayer without ceasing. Perseverance in love, even when you realize I don't wanna love anymore. Yes. Faith in believing that it's gonna mm -hmm. happen, even when you see everything is caging up on you, you know. So it is the key. Definitely, I agree with the statement there. Amen. 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 Guys, thank you so much for your time. I don't know if any of you have any specific prayer requests that we can pray for. Um, otherwise, then we can just close off in prayer. Yeah, uh, on my side, a few of my business partners I've tested positive, and uh, mm. I'm recently finding out those results. So I might have to go to. I'm actually, I'm actually going tomorrow to test, and yes. is behind me with, with that. Um, we trust that everything is fine and in God. So I wanted to put that up as a prayer. Yes. Amen. Amen. Blue. Prayer. Sorry. I'm saying we'll keep Chava in prayer. Yeah. Anything from your side, Blue? Uh, my side. Just uh, pray for us to stay safe. And mm. um, I've been doing a bit of fellowship with my neighbors around here. So, mm. um, some of them work as doctors. Some of them work as nurses. And some of them work as law enforcement, etc. So yes. Those are the essential worker which are on the forefront of this. So I, I imagine that um, uh, because it's not easily detectable, they might yes. even, uh, do breathe this thing to us that God may just protect me, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and protect them as well. Mm. Okay. All right. Shall we 
pray together, um, guys, and um, let's just agree in prayer that um, all these requests um, go before God and being the good God that he is, he will hear our prayers and answer our prayers. Can we start? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We give you the glory. We give you the praise, mighty God, for bringing us together this evening, Lord Jesus. And Father God, we thank you for your word, Lord God, that promises us, Father God, that that which has been lost, Father God, yes. is not completely lost, yeah. Father God. But in your own way, in your own doing, Father mm -hmm. God, you will see to bring back a multiple folds into our lives. And so we give you the praise and we give you the glory, Lord Jesus, for that. And this evening, Father God, I just want to bring before you Shaba and his family, mighty God, as he goes for testing tomorrow, Lord Jesus. I ask for your protection. I ask for your cover, Lord Jesus. I ask, Father God, for good health in our families, Father God, that you protect us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for we know that by your stripes we are healed, Lord Jesus. And so, Father God, I just ask for protection for this family, mighty God, yes. that no harm comes to them, mighty God. And Father God, any fears or anxiety that may be building up, Father God, yes, we right now, Father God, ask Lord Jesus that you remove them, mighty God, and replace that with the spirit of peace, Father God. Yes. The spirit of peace, Father God, that surpasses all understanding, mighty God. And to all other families that are in similar situations, my God, I ask, Father God, for your hand, for your love, mighty God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your promises, mighty God. Also praying for Blue, Father God, thanking you, Father God, that he is fellowshipping with others, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that even during this lockdown, my God, your word is alive and living, Father God. So we thank you for such fellowships, Father God. And again, we bring before you those, Father God, that are in the forefront of this uh, pandemic, Father God. We ask the Heavenly Father that you just touch them, heal them, Father God. May they know, Father God, that you are still in control, Lord Jesus. So nothing, Lord Jesus, will deter us from seeking you or going after your heart, my Lord God. We thank you and we give you all the glory and honor this evening. I thank you, Lord Jesus. And I continue to pray also for our Sky Group, Lord Jesus. Father God, asking you to just touch each and every person, my God. You know what they are going through, mighty God. You know what their needs are, Father God. Help us, Lord Jesus, to reach out to them, Father God. Yes. May they not... May they not ever feel alone, Father God, but know, yes. Father God, that we are a family, we are a unity, mm. and we have you, Father God, as our Father, and we can come to you at any time mm. and ask you, Lord Jesus, That's so, right. Father God, just ask for those connections, Father God, right. that may they continue even during this lockdown, mighty God. Teach us to love one another as you loved us, Father God. Teach us to reach out to each other. Uh, Teach us to pray without ceasing at all times, mighty God. And at all times, we ask for right standing with you, Father God. Where we have gone against your will, Father yes, God, we ask for your forgiveness, mighty God. Because only you, Father God, can give us a renewed life, Father God. And so we thank you. We thank you, mighty Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, that in you all things are made possible, mighty That's God. That's right. Father God, in this time, we ask that you take us to the next level of our faith, mighty God. Mm -hmm. We will not go by what we see, Father God, but we will go by your word, Father God. And so we thank you and we glorify you this evening. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Yeah, guys, keep well, keep safe, keep mm -hmm. warm. Mm. And as I say, really, let's just be looking out for, for one another. Really, my, my concern is, is with, with the group and where everybody is at this time. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, right. I honestly right. feel, um, mm. yeah, there, there's really so much going on, you know, mm. and um, yeah. But right. we will overcome. We will overcome. Definitely, definitely.